Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here, and welcome to the Sphero Druid 8.3 guide. This guide will cover the main essentials, including essences, traits, gear, talents, rotation, and the play style of a Pharaoh Druid in 8.3. For this guide, I consulted with Cassidy and used footage from him plus Suffrey, whom are both highly skilled rank 1 Pharaoh Druids. Be sure to check out their streams if you want more higher level Pharaoh Druid content. There are mainly two major choices that you can use as a Feral Druid for your Mage Essence, being Breath of the Dying and Conflict and Strife. Breath of the Dying can do a ton of extra pressure, making it excellent for aggressive comps as well as against teams where you struggle to land kills. Conflict and Strife will be your go-to against compositions where you struggle to live, or for dealing with melee cleaves where you want thorns and other PvP talents. That leaves us with your minor slots, which will consist of the following. You want Breath or Conflict as your first minor, using whichever one is not going to be your major essence. Then, Memory of Lucid Dreams and Vision of Perfection should be your other two minor essences, which pretty much are never replaced. Your best in slot Azurite traits will look like this. Three Iron Jaws, two Masterful Instincts, and one Gushing Lacerations. Iron Jaws gives you the most damage out of all the traits, being the go-to one you want to stack. Masterful Instincts gives you a nice amount of extra stats, giving you Mastery, which is your best stat as a Feral Druid, as well as more armor after Survival Instincts expires. Gushing Lacerations gives a bit more damage, but also can give extra combo points, allowing for a more fluid rotation. The minor traits in general are quite lackluster now, but in general, you want to go for Ursoc's Endurance, Impassive Visage, or Resounding Protections, if you are able to use them. Your stat priority will be Mastery, then Versatility, then Haste, then Crit. Mastery gives you the most damage, and since you are a very mobile class, you can prioritize it over Versatility in order to deal more pressure. Versatility gives damage and damage reduction, being a staple stat and should be the second stat you stack as much of. That leaves you with Haste and Crit that you want to try and avoid in your gearing. Trinkets play a big part in your gearing now that they are incredibly powerful, as well as ranging from offensive and defensive trinkets, which can help in different matchups. The best in slot trinkets you can equip will be the Drestagath trinket alongside with the Insignia Trinket, as they are both great for pressure, as well as the Insignia adding to some extra versatility. If unable to get these two trinkets, there are other good alternatives, being the unused PvP trinkets, as well as the Remote Guidance Device PV trinket. The Bike Trinket in particular can sometimes run into pillars or be eaten by other players, but when you get it off, it deals a ton of burst damage, which can easily net you kills. Outside of these pressure trinkets, there are two other great defensive trinkets you could run when against teams such as Rogue Mage, used in order to survive their aggression. These trinkets are the Emblem or the Lingering Psychic Shell from Nazoth. With Corruption Gear, you want to use as many Gushing Wounds as possible, giving you a huge amount of extra damage on an insanely low Corruption cost. If unable to get that, you can go for Mastery Percentage or Proc Increases, giving you a lot of extra strong stats. Other backup Corruption pieces can include Versatility Percentage or Procs, Twisted Appendage or Infinite Stars, depending on what gear you have access to. The only other essential gear that would be needed is the Star from Mount in the new raid. It gives a chunk of extra damage and healing, around 8-10% extra, as well as having the ideal stats, making it a staff you definitely want to have. With normal talents, they will look like this the majority of the time. Most of your talents as Feral are staple choices, with only two rows really being contested. These come in rows 45 and 100. In row 45, you can go Guardian Affinity against teams like Rogue Mage for extra tankiness in order to live. Apart from that, you want to be Restoration Affinity as much as possible, as it gives you a ton of extra healing. At row 100, this choice is a bit more dependent on the type of healer you play against or your own playstyle. Blood Talents is good against Restored comps or comps where you do overall damage, especially when cleaving two targets. Feral Frenzy will be against Paladin or Mistweaver Monk compositions, where you want to win during offensive setups to kill one target. This also has excellent synergy with your Triple Iron Jaws traits if you can get three. With your PvP talents, this is a similar story, with most of them being very set in stone, as the rest of the PvP talents for Feral are fairly weak. For the most part, you'll be running with Ferocious Wound, 
Leader of the Pack, and Savage Momentum. Ferocious Wound helps to kill targets, giving them 16% health reduction, being even better this patch now as players have higher stamina values. Leader of the Pack gives a lot of off feeling as well as additional crit to you and your partners, giving your team extra pressure as well as survivability. Savage Momentum is really good at reducing the cooldown of your wall, plus Tiger's Fury with every kick you hit, making it excellent the longer the game goes on, provided you can interrupt well throughout the game. There are two more situational PvP talents that you could take, being Thorns and Cyclone. Thorns is great against many cleave compositions to deter their pressure. You can use it in twos as well against melee that you want to stop them from pressuring or create more pressure yourself. Cyclone can be good with a paladin or a mage, where you can chain crowd control a healer and a kill a DPS target. You could also use Cyclone on targets low on health, causing pressure, as well as tank interrupts whilst casting it, allowing your teammates to free cast. The reason why it's not good is that you have to spend a lot of time casting it, which can be disrupted, as well as means you lack a lot of damage if you keep trying to Cyclone too much, which is why Cassidy prefers prefers the other PvP talents in general. For your passive pressure, you want to make sure you keep up your bleeds with blood talents and tiger's fury. You'll also want to spread your bleeds, ideally to two targets, so that you can create maximum pressure constantly. As for your burst pressure, you want to make sure you have your bleeds on your target before you use Berserker, so you can spam Ferocious Bite on your target in order to deal some burst pressure. You want bleeds on your target before you use Berserker, so you can spam Ferocious Bite on your target in order to deal more pressure. If you combo this with your on-use trinkets such as Drestagaf or Reaping Flames, you can deal incredible damage, allowing for huge burst kills. The playstyle from Feral Druids can vary a lot in terms of defense and offense, but overall you are a very aggressive class. The main playstyles of a Feral are peeling for your team, making the most of your mobility, and creating offensive setups. There are quite a lot of ways to peel off pressure for your team as a Feral Druid, one of the most notable ones is by rooting enemy melee to deny pressure and uptime. Rooting melee here, like Cassidy does, means that you can avoid the pressure they do. This could be great during downtime on your offensive setups, or when you need to peel heavy pressure from them. Using thorns could be an excellent way to force enemy melee to take more damage, or switch off targets as well when used properly. It's excellent when playing with Disc Priests, as most melee want to tunnel them. By using Thorns, they will usually swap off, or if they continue their pressure onto a target with Thorns, they could get slaughtered. Pharaohs can peel so much that in fact, you also can set up drinks for your healers using your arsenal of crowd control, which can sometimes be the difference between winning or losing a certain matchup. When you don't have access to peeling the enemy team, you can always resort to your off healing. You have nice passive off healing, but you can also use other abilities to help keep your teammates alive. Feral Druid healing can be very strong and helpful during troublesome situations, which as you can see, helps your partners live tremendously, allowing them to hold on to additional defensive cooldowns. It's fair to say that Ferals might have the best mobility in the game out of all many specializations. Having passive more movement speed, as well as being able to shapeshift snail and over effects, can mean you are able to utilize it in many ways. Simply put, you can swap on and off targets rapidly in order to connect back to targets and keep up your pressure. As such, you can ping pong between DPS and healers often if you want to avoid cleave pressure, or if you want to crowd control the healer, then pressure the DPS, which could be much more difficult for most classes to easily do this without losing much uptime or damage. One of the best ways to utilize your mobility is by kiting a lot when in trouble. Since you are squishy by nature, especially during stuns, you may need to use your mobility to run away or pre-bear form stuns to reduce some pressure on you. This can easily be the difference between living or dying, as well as trading big defensive cooldowns. Skull Bash is also quite versatile. It's a rage kick and that could sometimes be used for mobility in troublesome situations, or allow you to land kicks from a distance, making it hard for enemy healers to free cast. You can typically pair with Wild Charge, as seen here, which can easily catch healers off guard, allowing you to land an easy kick. We brushed on Pharaohs having a ton of crowd control options, which now ties into being able to make offensive setups with your team. As such, you'll usually be the one initiating crowd control chains, allowing your partners to easily follow up with their own crowd control. Cassidy shows a perfect example of this with his jungle cleave, using his bash on the monk, into a root on the demon hunter, and a stun on the Death Knight, allowing his hunter to land a trap on the Mistweaver, which as you can see, is a devastating setup allowing them to slaughter Swapsy in this game. Making setups in this way, or bursting heavily with your partner as a Feral Druid, can allow for quick or unsuspecting kills sometimes, as well as being able to destroy your opponents rapidly. 
That's everything on the Feral Druid 8.3 guide. If this guide helped, make sure to like it and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.